number three. Uh, 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 uh. Nightshade. Now this was a peculiar game for its time. Uh, why do I say that? Because it was like a mix of point and click adventure with beat em up. Imagine Shadowgate mixed with River City Ransom. Anyway, let me give you an example. You start off the game in a death trap, okay? You're tied to a damn chair and a bomb ready to go off in a corner. When I first played this, my first instinct was to go to the candle and burn off the ropes, right? Candle's kind of obvious. It's there for no other reason. Oh, shit! Oh, Lord Jesus! Get the water, nigga! Anyway, yeah, that's what you do. But, what about the bomb? Oh, Jesus! Jesus! Yeah, okay, well, you're not dead, but you're badly injured. I can make it! I guess there's nothing you can do about that. Watch me. <laughs> just gotta start the game with a handicap, right? Nope. Do you know how many times I replayed just the first 10 seconds of this damn game thinking I wasn't moving fast enough to burn off the ropes? Do you know how bad I got at this game thinking it was cheating and just like giving me enough time? Well, that's because you're an idiot. What you're supposed to do is go behind that wall there, let the bomb blow up, and then burn off the ropes. Any other person would have seen that right away. Fuck! Alright, so now that you're out of that trap, you finally get to play the game and just fool around. Oh, don't make that face! Start to explore your surroundings and find all sorts of trinkets all over the place. Flashlight, screwdriver, a coin, whatever. So, what's a screwdriver for? That are only used for tightening and loosening screws. Oh, shit. To bring down the chandelier, of course. Why? So you can read some pointless message on it. At least he's doing something. All right, it's the best example. Ah, I just took a bone from the skeleton. What's that for? To ward off the dog and save the cat. Hmm, how do I get the statue without burning myself alive? You don't. Well, you just operate the giant candle, that's how. That's pretty much what this game is mostly full of. Mystery and puzzles. But in between all that is the occasional fight. Shut up, old lady. So you, here's your enemies. You got your stereotypical snobby English butler guys. Then they got your spandex-wearing ninja chicks. These here are my heads. Bald midget thugs with giant heads. <laughs> Don't forget the giant rat people, you know, this, this game's got everything. Just like Elvis in Blue Hawaii. So now you're probably wondering, what is the plot behind all this? What's, what's the storyline here? Well, you play some guy named Nightshade, a wannabe hero, who looks more like a sketchy serial killer himself. Who wants to free his hometown of Metro City from the crime lords that have overrun it? Uh, it turns out the original hero, Vortex. The vortex is an obscenity! I hate all women! Was murdered by these goons, and now you're all that's left to clean up the mess. Well, that's just great. The main villain is some Egyptian looking dude named Sutek. Suta. Sut. Sutek. Sutek. It's not that hard. I like rainbows. Sparkles and unicorns. Anyway, he's like the main leader, he controls all the bosses. You got this Goliath. Ninja Lady. Rat Man. British Man. I just think we should go to the toilet. That's it. I, I don't know if that's their actual names. I mean, the game never really tells you, so... So let's make some up. You got Big Dumb Fuck. That's not nice. Nunchuck Bitch. Luddite Shaky Knackered Wacker Kappa Man. You are a racist, man. And Steve. Well, all right then. All these bosses carry with something called a scarab, which you need to access the final area of the game. So, yeah. Besides killing all the mob bosses, you gotta do this other project as well, which is protecting these artifacts from Sutachbachwa. Because if he manages to steal them, then I don't know what happens. He gets rich. I win, you lose. You just need to put these protective domes on them as part of the game. Yeah, I've, I had no idea this was part of the main objective at all when I first played this as a kid. I just thought you had to kill the mob bosses and that's it. Well, you thought wrong. So how do you get these domes in to protect the artifacts? First, you need to gain access to the X-Hero's Vortex's lair. But before you can gain access to his lair, you need to have a high enough popularity. 
How do you get better popularity? Stop being such a dick. You need to do a bunch of good deeds, such as beating up goons or just saving a cat. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you could do the opposite like, if you wanted. Be like rude to everyone, but that's just counterproductive. <laughs> Alright, so you got all that, you get popular, gain access to Vortex's lair, take the domes, put them on the artifacts, beat up the mob bosses, collect the scarabs, and enter the final lair and beat up Sutsuk. <laughs> the end. You can't do that! Oh, and collect the staff of Ra, but I don't think that's mandatory at all. I think it's optional. I don't even know what it does. Well, good old game facts has answers to everything, right? All right, here we go. Staff of Ra. Uh, uh, surprisingly, the Staff of Ra is not actually used against Suzek. It only has eight shots, and it's best used against the mummies, which are summoned by Suzek during the final fight. <laughs> Fire it, press the up plus A buttons? What? Well, you know, how would you know to do that? I mean, if, I guess if you had the manual, you'd look that up, but it's like, you never use a combination for anything else in the game. Like, when I tried using it, I kept going to operate or use or whatever in, in my menu, thinking, like, every other item in the game, that's how you use it. But no, this specialty item, no explanation in the game itself, you have to know to press up and A. So friggin' dumb. So the, overall, this sounds pretty simple, right? It's as simple as touching this doorknob. Alright, let's get into the pros and cons now. <laughs> pros! Right away you'll notice a weird, goofy sense of humor with this game. It's not serious at all, it's just a big joke. You're a joke! Half the town calls you Lampshade, because they don't give a damn, even though- even if you are super popular. Even your own character is just a weirdo funny guy. Ah, uh, hey everybody! I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt, and my butt smells, and I like to kiss my own butt. <laughs> <laughs> the NPCs, yeah, they're they're the same. Even the animals can talk. <laughs> I don't get lives, but rather an escape scene from a death trap. Yeah, so it's not like your conventional game. You die, you lose a life, continue, or resume from a save point or something like that. It's just you get a, a weird death trap escape scene, so... The first one is the conveyor belt. This one, I, for whatever reason, as a kid, I kept screwing up the most, even though it's the first damn trap. Because there's two levers, and you have to use your feet to hit them. But for some reason, I always managed to hit the wrong one. <laughs> Alright, so the second trap is just this weird spiky wall coming in to crush you. It's, this one's pretty straightforward. You just take the poles off the wall, put them together, and... That's it, and you get out. It's easier than the first one. <laughs> Alright, trap three gets a little more complicated. So here you are stuck bound to a chair again. And you got a dog running around down there, and the floor is slowly opening up on you. So you can imagine what happens if you don't get free quickly. <laughs> so to do that, you just have to operate on the wall. I guess the spiky bits of metal here will cut you free. And you hop over the hole. Pull the lever, and then the door opens, and so I just have to time it and make sure you don't jump on the dog and jump just in time to run out the door. Give him the goddamn club! <laughs> Alright, so trap number four, you got this big huge 100 or 700, I can't read the number, ton, I guess, weight coming down on you, and if you don't act fast enough, well... You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> Okay, so you got this rat running around, you think, what do I do? Do I talk to him? Do I operate on him? No, none of that seems to work. Well, what else can I do? Get me the hell out of here! So the thing about this trap is you have to go into it with a piece of food on you. Yes. Yes. If you don't have food, you consider yourself dead because you have to f use the food on the rat right away. You know, come up and chew off your ropes, invisible ropes here, and then you're free. Bad case of diarrhea. And alas, you have trap five. Now this is the one where 
your days are numbered. Your toast. You're fucking finished. This, this is it. This is your final life. If you get to this trap, there's no way out. You're like Captain America. You can try everything you can possibly think of. This is a freezing trap and you just freeze to death and that's all there is to a game over. I mentioned this before, but the fact that it's a point and click adventure game mixed with beat em up, I thought that was pretty original for its time. I know I say this about all my top 10 games, but that's why they're top 10, why they stuck with me so long, because all these games I've mentioned were so different for me at the time. Well, I like the fact you get to search around looking for random trinkets and items to figure out what to do with them. Play Bill Clinton rape whistle. And on top of that, the beating him up part was, could be fun, it just took a little getting used to. I mean, once you got used to the enemy's at attacks and how to uh, overcome them, then it's pretty straightforward. But uh, then again, there's the controls, which kind of puts a damper on things. I'll get into that in the cons. The popularity meter. I actually like this. I thought it was pretty neat. That you didn't have to strictly just beat up guys to get your popularity to go up. You could do little side missions like save the cat. Feed the animals. Save the lady from the burning building. You know. No, 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 no. I don't know. The replay value, which was both good and bad. I'll speak the, of the good side first. I mean, again, there's a lot of little side quests and quirks about this game you could figure out. And just when you think you found them all, there's always something else that you've missed, which makes you want to uh, honestly go back and play the game over and over until you find everything. Like, it wasn't until I watched like a speed run or a, a long play, I should say, that I discovered the whole Staff of Raw thing. Like, I had no idea that was even a thing. That Because I don't think it's mandatory to beat the game. It's just an optional item that you can get that I don't really know what it does. Keen. So I mentioned some of the odd things about this game, which again I thought were pro. Like, for example, if you talk to the seagull... ...or the squirrel... Okay, okay, Mr. Lemshade. You examine this newspaper. What the hell? Or you go to Larry and Amanda's fine china shop. There's, there's no real beneficial purpose to going here. All right, well, then get the hell out of my store, all right? Or you could buy the fake staff of Ra from the Curios place, which, yeah, it's a waste your time. I don't know if... Any of you know anything about Taiwan? I just wonder if that... <clears throat> Alright, cons. So this game can be very difficult and unforgiving at times. This is where the replay value I was talking about comes in in a negative way. Having to replay the game over and over just to learn what not to do can be super damn frustrating. Especially when it comes to the fighting in this game. If you make one little mistake in one of these fights, that's it. They'll pin you in the corner and you're dead. And it's like, oh damn, like it was just a simple mistake and I gotta redo the whole game. If you, especially if you can't do the death trap, you screw that up. Hey, leave it for face. So when you get to Vortex's lair, there's this little healing machine he has there. So if you're, you're low on health, you can use this machine and get all your health back, which is great, right? No. Uh, not if it only works so many times. Like, what the hell? It only works like twice or three times and you can't use it again. The OST or the music in this game can get annoying pretty damn fast. Um, it's just repetitive and loud. I mean, even if you turn the volume down, it just sounds piercing to the ears. Maybe it's just me, but it, the music in itself is, you know, it's pretty original and different, but once you hear it 500 times over exploring the world, you just get real sick of it real fast. I'm sick of you. Going back to those fight scenes, uh, I, 
I hated trying to figure out these fight scenes. Every time I replay this game, I completely forget how you're supposed to fight some of these guys. Especially these stupid Sutek statues that you have to fight. Or robots, I don't know what they are. If you make a mistake and they pin you in that corner... That's it, you're done. Also, when it comes to the fighting, are the clunky controls, that's the next con, I guess. The controls can be really... When you're exploring the world, they're just fine. But when you're in a fight scene, it just seems really clunky and really difficult to use. And that's where you can easily make mistakes because I feel the controls are pretty lousy. Yeah? Well, I had sex with your wife! I can't even use cheat codes and have fun with this game, alright? Yeah, that, that, that's a con. The cheats don't work very well. Like, there is a cheat where you can use where you have infinite life. Perfect, right? You can't lose a fight then, right? No. No! Look, like I said about those statues, if you get pinned in the corner with infinite life on, it's even worse because now you can't die and you can't re-end the game. So you have to reset. Or maybe. Just maybe. Just don't cheat this time. How do you say this name anyway? Sutek. 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 Sutek? I am Sutek the Destroyer. Oh, it's just Sutek. That's it. That's right! I never realized until I watched a long play that you had to get these stupid domes from Vortex Slayer. I mean, look at you go into Slayer, right? Now, as a kid, I thought these were part of the background. Like, I didn't know these were things that were standing out that you had to collect. But where does it say here you have to collect these domes? Oh, I'm not dumb. I'm smart. Thanks for making that obvious. Shouldn't you make them a different color and make them stand out more? Who cares? Later on in this game, when you're looking for the rat boss, whatever, Steve, you're calling him. It's a pretty name, though. It really is nice. Uh, you find Vortex's dead body just in his lair. As a kid, I thought this was morbid and scary. I really did. I thought this was like, oh, his dead body's still there hanging like Jesus on a crucifix. Freaked out as a kid when I saw this scene. All right, so that's it. Nightshade, number three, my top 10 list. Pretty original game for its time, with clunky controls and really goofy sense of humor. If you can find this game legit, go nuts. Fuck! So otherwise, just use an emulator like any everyone else. I'm just about done my top 10 NES. Wow, I'm almost there. I'll get it done eventually. Nobody can hear you. Nobody cares about you. Barbecue foot massage!